Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Kawi Lucas. Think Tech tries hard to cover the important happenings in Hawaii and to bring you in-depth analysis with the people making those things happen. Debuting for the first time on U.S. soil and the biggest international event ever to take place in Hawaii was the IUCN's World Conservation Congress held in early September. The IUCN is the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Not only did Think Tech provide a daily update from the Convention Center, we interviewed dozens of the more than 10,000 participants from Hawaii and around the world. A number of Think Tech show hosts, including the host of Sustainable Hawaii, Kirsten Turner, joined the international media to report what was happening at the Congress. No one put the Congress in greater perspective than the man responsible for bringing it together, Chipper Wickman, President and CEO of the National Tropical Botanical Garden. We're here on the exhibit floor, um, which is open to the public, and getting into the IUCN's regular agenda for this was really, really competitive. There were thousands of people trying to get into the knowledge cafes and workshops, and, and what we recognize is that would only give a fraction of our Taro Roots people an opportunity to participate. So we created a really vibrant, exciting um, up series of opportunities to, through the Hawaii Pacific Pavilion, which is programmed nonstop, day from morning to night, with practitioners from across the islands. I was there with Mac Poi Poi uh, yesterday afternoon from, from Molokai talking about Lavaya Pono, you know, how, what are the right Pono fish, fishing practices. So it's been so exciting to to, to see this, to see our people from across the Paiana, across our archipelago, being able to engage with the world. I just got the update. We have 10,100 people registered in this Congress from 192 countries. This is the largest environmental meeting in the history of the world, the largest WCC in the history of IUCN. I mean, this is, it exceeded all of our expectations. You know, when we were, Embarking on this, I, I said all along, I have no doubt we will host the best World Congress the world has ever seen. I mean, we could do that blindfolded. We know how to party. We know how to, hospitality is us. We're it. But if this Congress blows out of town and there's no legacy left behind, we've failed. We've wasted eight years of our life and a lot of money. So what's left behind? The legacy is critical. Youth engagement. We are inspiring. There's going to be over a thousand youth here doing systems thinking at this Congress, learning from these incredible people from around the world, but also being inspired by our, by our own solutions to, to problems that have been developed on islands. Inspiring our youth and the next generation is an important legacy. At the opening ceremony, the governor stood up and he talked about creating a biosecurity plan, an interagency biosecurity plan. That was my bucket list legacy thing. If we can create a biosecurity plan for our state that will protect us from more invasive species and invasive diseases and things that are eroding the integrity of our incredible biodiversity here, that is one of the most significant things. I'd just like to add that, that um, this Congress, the energy level in, in, in this room here and, and on the different levels, uh, the energy level at the, at the opening reception on the roof where Jack Johnson was playing and 7,000 people were screaming and uh, it, it is so inspirational. One of the reasons that I really felt that the, the world could come here is islands are evolutionary engines. Because of isolation, they, 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 they create an environment where species evolve and, and, and become new. Uh, but islands are also at the cutting edge of, of the, all of the issues that create endangerment, climate change, invasive species. Um, and so islands are forced to lead the way. We also have the ability to scale unique programs um, and, and that work on islands that can be applied to continental areas. So I thought, how important is it for the world to come and see what islands are doing, what we're doing here in Hawaii? And at the opening ceremony, you heard from the Pacific Island leaders. Islands, the islands of the Pacific will lead the way forward for our planet. Of course, it took many Hawaii agencies to make this huge international event a success. 
DLNR, the Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources, was front and center. Hawaii's got front and center. Uh, we're the first pavilion you see in the exhibition hall uh, where we have exhibits and demonstrations and discussions and forums all day long, every day during the public forum, and we've got presentations in the, uh, in the whole conference. Uh, we have uh, 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 many dozens of uh, opportunities for people to engage in Hawaii conservation in the middle of opportunities to engage in, in global con conservation issues. This is such an exciting event for Hawaii. I mean, if you just walk around the convention center here, everywhere you see thousands of people from all over the world and all over Hawaii uh, in, in an incredible opportunity to learn all kinds of things about conservation and to share and to talk to each other. To, you can just bump into somebody that you've met on another island or in another country who's working on something really incredible that uh, you know you can just catch up and exchange ideas and get new ideas. It's, it's just tremendously exciting for us here in Hawaii. Well, my good friend, hey, Bob Oskerlin, great to see you. Hi. Now, tell us about your albatross book. Oh, uh, Holy Moly, Albatross and Other Ancestors is the name of the book. Moly is the Hawaiian word for albatross. So Holy Moly, an expression we all use, an expression of joy, an expression of, look at that amazing thing. That's why I called it that, Al Holy Moly. Albatross are amazing species that almost no one in the world will ever get to see. And so, on, Ka on the island of Kauai, though, they do nest among people for the first time ever. And so, there's an opportunity to get to know who they are. I had an amazing opportunity to be in some private colonies and to witness them. So, I wrote stories about them. My goal was to write a book whose words were as beautiful as the birds themselves. Everything about them is superlative, extraordinary beings. And since most people won't ever be around them, I felt uh, uh, compelled to share who they are with everyone so people could get a sense of these critters in our world and want, want to help them, want to help to protect them. Kirsten also provided insights into the World Conservation Congress Forum, which preceded the members assembly, where final actions were voted on. Through a variety of venues, including knowledge cafes, workshops, conservation cases, and high-level dialogues, the forum provided an opportunity for countries, regions, and transnational partnerships to showcase their initiatives. These covered deforestation, ocean acidification, protections against invasive species, and international trafficking in endangered wild animals. The more than 1,200 forum events ran for 14 hours every day, from 7 in the morning till 9 at night. Many of them took place in the large regional and subject area pavilions, like this one, the Oceans Pavilion. Coming out with um, NOAA with Navigating Change. The Renin region, The forum was the hub of public debate where IUCN members and participants from 200 countries discussed and developed solutions to the world's most pressing conservation challenges. In addition to being hosts of this year's event, Hawaii's government agencies, private sector organizations, and partnerships like the Hawaii Conservation Alliance presented over 100 sessions and facilitated many of the workshops trying to resolve the impacts of marine ecotourism around the world. Hawaii was also very well represented by numerous organizations that provided important information for the public at interactive booths in the main exhibition hall. Perhaps the most impressive was the Lion Arboretum's booth, made with all natural and recycled materials. We're able to interact with the best conservation scientists and policy makers and uh, people involved in biological conservation all over the globe. Uh, Part of that is that we can, we can learn a great deal from uh, many people. And I think the other part is that we have a lot to share. We're able to feature the programs that we have here that others might be interested and benefit from. And we have, we have a lot to be proud of, a lot of things that uh, we uh, have going on here in Hawaii that are important in this area. We have about 22,000 accessions of, of plants, so over 5,000 different species of plants. Um, what this display uh, is really featuring is our important work on, on uh, native Hawaiian plants, particularly those that are very, very rare. Uh, and 
Uh, this, this display uh, describes our partnership with the Plant Extinction Prevention Program, a state uh, program, um, and also the Laukahi Network, which is a, a coordination effort that Lion Arboretum is a, and, and, and PEPS is a part of to uh, collect the plants in the wild, to conserve them as a, you know, a genetic safety net, pre uh, preserve them from extinction, and eventually to get them back planted into the wild. So that's uh, what we're re really emphasizing. In terms of the plants, there's uh, sadly too many to name. We have, uh, uh, I think, about 1,400 um, indigenous or native plants here in Hawaii, and uh, I, I, a large percentage of those, 75% or more, are uh, endangered or threatened. And uh, what we're particularly focusing on is those that are uh, critically endangered and uh, that have fewer than about 50 plants left in the wild. That is the particular focus of the Plant Extinction Prevention Program. And uh, when they collect the, the materials, uh, and so there, there's hundreds that they've, they've brought to us, and we uh, keep them as seed or as, as tissue culture plants, uh, grow them in our greenhouses, and then uh, look towards replanting them in, in uh, wild areas where we can uh, assure that they'll survive. Some of the other organizations represented included the Nature Conservancy in Hawaii, Maui Ocean Center, the Kauai Seabird Habitat Conservation Program, Blue Planet Energy, Kuaina Ulu Awamo, Kupu, the East West Center, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Navy, and of course all the universities. Judging from the activity and the crowds, the most popular exhibit of all seemed to be the Hawaii and Pacific Islands Pavilion. Pacific Pavilion and right now, the development and conservation. This is how did you need glasses to read? Uh. <laughs> uh, I've been conservation minded since I was a little kid and uh, you know, I'm an artist, so I felt strongly that art could play a role. So I've uh, painted a hundred, you know, ocean murals around the world and finished that in Beijing for the Cultural Olympics, the Green Olympics. And to be invited here to, uh, to share my art and the message of conservation uh, is a big honor. So hats off to all these great people like Dr. Sylvia Earle and uh, Dr. Greg Stone and Nainoa Thompson, one of my heroes for uh, uh, the Hokulea. And there's just so many good uh, people here. And it's a lot bigger than anybody thought, but it needs to be because this is the most critical time in history. We need an environmental renaissance period. And the way we get that is really grassroots. You know, uh, if you have conservation in your heart and mind, uh, you can do anything because the cause really drives you. And it, it certainly has dri drove my art from the very beginning. I came to Hawaii uh, in uh, 1979 to study, specifically to study uh, humpback whales that I'm depicting in this mural. So I moved to Lahaina and uh, eventually I moved over to Oahu and painted a, a giant ocean mural there. and and then uh, you know the North Shore is where I live right uh, at Cavella Bay so I see the ocean every day and I see the uh, problems and I see also so many great people like Jack Johnson performed here live uh, so he brings the music I bring the art you bring what you bring everybody brings something to it and we can change the world together I busted him too you know I used to mentor him when he was 17 and he's one of my my heroes Pierre Yves Cousteau watch out for this kid but Jacques Cousteau really inspired me when I was a, a kid growing up in Michigan. Look at, Look at them. The Hawaii and Pacific Islands Pavilion was the center of discussion about the recognition of the role of indigenous peoples as the traditional source of ecosystem conservation knowledge, particularly those from the islands most threatened by climate change. We are an island state and we have so much in common with the people here that are represented from 187 nations. We have found common causes, we have found common problems and common solutions. And these things we hope in four years will be done and we can move on with other bigger matters. But what I have expressed in many of these things, as much as you want to be a conservative, we must address greed and power because those things are the evils that unless addressed will continue to have these problems. Aloha. The Pacific Islands Pavilion was also the happening place in the evenings, where attendees went to wind down. A group from New Zealand inspired the crowd 
with their traditional dance. The same group had the crowd shaking off their long conference day with a little reggae dancing. The international visitors were visibly impressed with what was going on. Kirsten spoke with Priscilla Tumentafobuzi, representing the Center for the Environment and Development in Cameroon. I represent uh, the Center for Environment and Development Studies in Cameroon, which is a center that works on uh, environmental issues. We do sustainable development uh, uh, and uh, research to adapt to the changing climatic uh, conditions. I'm here at the con Congress to join forces with other conservationists because it's only um, by coming together that we can fight uh, the, 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 the battle against uh, climate change. I think it's not a one-man one man thing. We have to do it together. That's why I'm here. I'm here to share my experiences and to learn from the, the uh, other uh, researchers, other conservationists, and the Hawaiian, how they are protecting their environment. We see lots and lots of more uh, 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 politicians, uh, governments, NGOs committing. I think we see more political will. Everybody is becoming more conscious, more aware, and wanting to do something to 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 take care of the changing negative effects that we are experiencing today in the environment. I think it's it's a great uh, success that we are here. Yeah, Hawaii is lovely. It's a lovely island, and. Uh, the people are welcoming, I'll say, and uh, the few days that I've been here, I like the place because for once it's like uh, where I'm coming from, the climate is not much different, so I, I think I, I enjoy it. Kirsten also spoke with J. Michael Vakili from the Indo-German Biodiversity Program. So my name is uh, Michael Vakili. I'm working for the uh, German uh, organization called GIZ, which is basically the organization that implements projects from the, of the German government with partner countries. And in this case, it, our partner country is India. And here we have a large Indo-German biodiversity program. Uh, and within this program, we have different projects that are dealing with the three E's that you see behind you, ecology, economy, and equity. For conservation to work, and for people to buy into it, you also have to show the economic value of conservation. So bringing on the, the evaluation of ecosystems and their services, that is very important. So in the range of uh, projects that we are supporting here, you have them all listed here, some five of them. Uh, we have then a project, for example, that looks into participatory approaches to set up marine protected areas in India. Uh, we have a project uh, called TEEP that looks into the economic evaluation uh, we have done studies, I would love to show you that, for example, a vulture in India, which uh, gets rid of all the carcasses of dead uh, cows, is worth $11,000. And people had never known about this. They only know it now because the uh, vulture has disappeared because of the widespread use of diclofenac. I'm a marine biologist by training and having had the chance to participate in the official uh, declaration of the largest marine protected area is uh, sort of something very close to my heart and I really congratulate the people of Hawaii to be the one because for almost 15 years of my professional career we have been hammering down this message, we need more protected areas. So you are now really the forerunner. So in this respect, it is uh, for me, a, I really feel proud to be here. Clearly, the expansion of the Papahanao Moku Akea Marine National Monument by President Obama left a huge impression on our international visitors, putting Hawaii in the forefront of the marine conservation community. The timing was perfect. 
my name is uh, Surapon Duongkhae from Thailand Society for Protection of Cruelty to Animals. Uh, we came here because uh, we're interested in uh, to join, to share about uh, wildlife trafficking and about the impact of ecotourism to actually to the marine uh, animals. And uh, I think it's quite interesting that uh, there are many issues here. It's not only uh, wildlife conservation, but it's also about the people, about uh, how to, to share uh, together uh, for every living organism, you know, to live in the world. This is a very good point. So I came here to, to, to hear about the uh, energy species because in Thailand some uh, are on trade and some are cruelty by, by the zoos. So I myself put uh, the Animal Act into the parliament and now approved already. And I want to hear that uh, what I can help to protect the, the uh, wildlife energies. We can be proud of the way our state was showcased at the Congress. In addition to the millions of dollars spent on hotel rooms, meals, and excursions, the measures passed by the member organizations will go down in history as the Hawaii Commitments. These commitments include, among others, those introduced by our very own UH law students. They call for global action about marine debris, preventing the introduction of harmful new marine organisms to Pacific waters, responses to climate change, community-based natural resource management, sustainable growth, the importance of environmental courts, as well as the first ever affirmation of the role of indigenous people and culture in conservation efforts. What happened is worth studying. To find out more about the IUCN and the World Conservation Congress, go to IUCNWorldConservationCongress.org. And at the very end of the day, we certainly need to recognize and thank the hundreds of Hawaii volunteers that helped make the Congress such a great success. Mahalo nui loa to all of them. And now, let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii, sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them, but ThinkTech can take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government and in communities around the state. Remember also that ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays, then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long. If you miss the show, you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our programs and help us raise public awareness in Hawaii, contact me, jay at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in Hawaii. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. <laughs> If 
If you'd like to speak out on an issue or event, you can. We love the First Amendment, and we love hearing from our viewers. You can come down to our speaker's corner and make a video statement on the web. See thinktechhawaii.com. And you can call in and join our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in at 415-871-2474 and pose a question or make a comment. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Cowie, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cowie does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Kawi Lucas. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.